can I take you what, what we've done everybody knows the six conditions although I, I'll refresh people's memories of course um, and, and what we've done is made very apparent minor changes to them but those minor changes are quite significant in many respects so can I start talking about the conditions well that'd be great and it, it would be great to list the conditions I guess because mm. perhaps not everyone here is sure. yeah. familiar with the person sent and to be approach. honest I'm not mm. certain without thinking really hard I could list them without having the, the prompt you know the um, I, I haven't committed them to memory yeah <laughs> me neither well it's so good to hear you saying that Alan. <laughs> the, the wee bit of a prompt is just enough yeah. so um, I, we always talk in terms of Rogers said we say <laughs> yeah we so say. Rogers said um, two people are in psychological contact um, and of course we say three people are in psychological contact mm. um, now to start not always but Often, to start with, it means that uh, I'm going to call my couple every time I make reference to them. I'm going to call them Sam and Chris. Okay. Which is cleverly gender-free. <laughs> yes. Yes, that sounds really helpful, Alan. Thank you. Yeah, so, I, so I'm seeing Sam and Chris. Now, the likelihood is, in most cases, I will start by being in psychological contact with each of them. Hmm but they may not be in psychological contact with one another. I, I, I saw a couple this afternoon who were forced to come and see me by court. Well, they're not in terribly good psychological contact with one another. Um, okay. I hope, and I think I am in psychological contact with each of them. So, so we start trying to create psychological contact between me and each of them. And then very much what I was saying a few minutes ago, we're hoping that will lead into genuine psychological contact between them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So that's so, the first condition. Condition one. Yeah. Condition two, the, the, the first whom we shall term the client is in a state of incongruence, being vulnerable or anxious. Um, and of course, we, we say about that, the couple whom we shall term the clients are in a state of incongruence, being vulnerable or anxious. Um, I often think in a funny sort of way, when you're working with individuals, you don't need to think too deeply about that condition if you don't want to. It kind of works if you don't think too deeply about it. Um, but I think for working with couples, you do have to think quite deeply about it. Um, I I never met Carl Rogers, to, sadly, um, but I've spoken to a lot of people who have. And one of the consistent things people say to me is that he chose his words very carefully. He, you know, he, he literally would worry over the words and get the words absolutely correct. So I therefore um, assumed that... Um, being in a state of incongruence, being vulnerable or anxious must have some important meaning. And so I, I started to try and look that up and understand what Rogers may have been meaning by that. And I found um, a thing in um, Kirchenbaum Henderson, the, the, the Rogers reader, the Red mm -hmm. Book, okay. this bit um, where Rogers said, the threat that if the experience were actually symbolized in awareness, the self-concept would no longer be a consistent gestalt. The conditions of worth would be violated and the needed self-regard would be frustrated. A state of anxiety would exist. So if I put that in my own sort of simple words, I would say that the client is kidding themselves. Something has happened um, and they, they, they won't let that in. They won't uh, admit that to acknowledge. They won't symbolize it. Mm. The anxiety is coming because they're frightened that whatever has happened may break through and this fiction they're telling themselves is no longer credible. Mm. Okay. That makes great sense with an individual. Yeah. When you start to apply that to a couple, you then start to get questions because is that incongruence, that, that which they won't admit to themselves, is that an internal within each of them, Chris and Sam, or is it that the incongruence is between Chris and Sam mm. even? Because it might be that if Chris thinks Sam is an absolutely awful person, Sam isn't actually. Sam's actually quite a nice person. You could say that's an incongruence as well. And 
Chris won't admit into the, the, their own consciousness that Sam is nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but a, a very important point in terms, you know, more complex in a way. Mm. Yeah. So that I guess Carl Rogers was talking about how the congruence can really do something to the individual, it really disrupt them. And, and of course, the, the client will only come if they're experiencing that incongruence. Yeah. I said earlier, clients don't come because life's going great. You, you yes. know, they. So the client is only going to come and see us or any any counsellor or therapist of any brand um, if they're experiencing that incongruence and that's leading to a feeling of vulnerability and anxiety. Mm. Which I guess is the same with couples. People come when their relationship is in difficulty. Yeah, It might be that the relationship is in difficulty or it might be that they themselves individually are in difficulty. Mm. Then, of course, has an impact on their relationship as well. Yeah, so there might be an individual presenting issue that's that's um, arising through the couple's counselling. That's or... completely separate individual presenting issues. Mm. Okay, They're interacting on one another. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And is there something also then for the couple that they might have created a fiction in the same way that an individual might have created? A fiction to, that is the incongruence, or yes. Well, again, this these may be these internal fictions that the individual has created, or it might be um, each has created a fiction about the other. Mm. Um, or uh, from time to time, had people say things like, it, 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 "It's me and my partner against the world." Um, so there's a slightly different fiction again there. Mm. Then when the partner falls in love with somebody else. <laughs> right. It <laughs> really it throws that fiction out, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Which mm. they will not admit into awareness and they won't symbolise that possibility. Yeah. Well, that, I think that catches um, a question that we've had. Well, there's always lots of questions around congruence, isn't there, in any um, kind of discussion. But is Alan saying that the incongruence might be within one or the other or the couple or all three all of those options all the possibilities mm. yeah i would say probably um hmm, interest to stick your neck out isn't it but probably they're most likely to be within each individual okay but mm. not always yeah it sounds like that's been your experience alan yeah. so i was trying to do a quick sort of survey in my head it's mm. easy is it mm. but, um, yeah. yeah thank you thank you for that um great explanation around congruence it's such an interesting concept and yeah yeah mm. so go on to three shall i mm. rogers said the second person whom we shall term a therapist is congruent or integrated in the relationship and Kate and I changed that very slightly to say the third person whom we shall term the therapist is congruent or integrated in the relationship. I don't think the general thrust of that varies. Um, just as um, if I've got an area that I haven't got sorted out in my life, I'm probably not going to do too well with a client who presents with the same problem. So if, if, if I won't admit into my aware, awareness what's really happening, I'm probably going to have difficulty in helping the client to admit into his or her awareness what's really happening. Mm -hmm. um,